what was the difference between Smilodon and Homotherium? Prehistoric cats never get old, mostly because they are eh, so old and mysterious. After all, at the end of the day, all we have are bones. The subjects of today's video are a pair of cats you wouldn't want to pick a bone with if you were around during the Ice Age. The Sabertooth's Smilodon and Homotherium. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take a closer gander at these ancient killers, where and how they lived, and why they went extinct. What's the reality between these two cats? Let's find out. Sabertooth Nightmare The word saber-toothed cat generally refers to the several genera and species within an extinct subgroup within Felidae, the cat family. This subgroup is the Machairodontini, or scimitar-toothed cat subfamily. As you already know, these kitties were largely typified by extra-long upper canine teeth. However, the length of said teeth vary depending on this particular species of Machairodont. A Machaira is a type of ancient Greek short sword, and Odontus is Greek for tooth. The cats themselves are deader than the ancient Greek empire, having died out in the early Holocene, about 8,000 years ago, after a nearly 20 million year run. So far, paleontologists have unearthed around 80 species distributed across 23 genera. These animals range from the sizes of lynxes to brown bears, and had a wide distribution across Africa, Eurasia, and the Americas. Today's subjects, Homotherium and Smilodon, are, or were, two of the larger genera within the subfamily. Homotherium lived from the Pliocene to the late Pleistocene, a temporal range of 4 million to 12,000 years ago. Fossils have been found in Eurasia, North America, and Africa. Alleged Homotherium remains have been found in South America, but these are still the subject of much debate. There are three widely accepted species, though more may be possible. There was Homotherium latidens from Eurasia, and Homotherium serum and Homotherium ischyris from North America. The Homotherium fossils found in Africa have yet to be solidly classified into a particular species because of how fragmented they are. One possible South American species is Homotherium venezuelensis, but some scholars argue that this animal is actually Xenosmilus, another genus of Machairodont very similar to Homotherium. Smilodon, on the other hand, first emerged during the early Pleistocene and went extinct in the early Holocene, a range of 2.5 million to 8,000 years ago. All three species lived in the Americas, literally from the northernmost tip to the southernmost. Now, when we say that these cats were large, we mean pretty much bigger than most modern cats. Homotherium was the smaller of the two, and its largest species was about the size of a modern African lion or tiger. Body length was between 4 feet 11 inches and 6 feet 7 inches, while shoulder height was up to 3 feet 7 inches. Weight was up to 440 pounds, making it a pretty hefty unit. Smilodon was around the same size in many cases, but some species were much, much larger. The weight range for the genus as a whole ranged from 120 to 800 pounds on average. Smilodon gracilis was the smallest of the lot, and North America's Smilodon fatalis was in the middle of the range. Smilodon populater, the saber-toothed tiger of the South American wilds, was arguably the largest cat ever, with some big males weighing around 1,000 pounds or more. Both cats were considerably robust, with Smilodon being significantly bulkier and more solid than modern lions and tigers. They were similar in proportion to modern forest cats, with rear limbs that were a touch shorter than the front, which suggests that they were built for moderate speed pursuits and ambush predation, rather than long drawn-out chases. Smilodon had particularly formidable forelimbs, likely for grabbing and manipulating prey like many modern big cats. However, Homotherium's front limbs were not as robust, and the claws were relatively short, which suggests it didn't use them for grabbing as much. Instead, Homotherium had particularly large incisors, which it used to grab hold of prey, much like a dog or hyena. These two groups of scimitar cats would have overlapped in certain places and times, particularly in the Americas. They would have competed for a lot of the same prey, including wild pigs, horses, birds, bovids, and more. People were doubtlessly part of the menu whenever the opportunity arose, 
but it's more than likely that humans had the upper hand in that particular struggle. Still, in a one-on-one -on -one physical clash with no weapons, a human would have stood no chance against a homotherium or Smilodon cat. Of course, these cats had a particular set of natural weapons that set them apart from most other cats – their sabers. Homotherium's canines were on the shorter side of the Machiridont spectrum at around 4 inches. However, this is still longer than the canines of any living cat species, though it's unclear if they would have been visible when the homotherium had its mouth closed. These teeth were broad-based and serrated, making them perfect for powerful slashing. In hunting, homotherium used its teeth to savagely sever throats and cause rapid blood loss. With its long and powerful neck, homotherium was quick and strong enough to get in position to strike killing blows without having to clamp and hold. In battle with other predators, and even humans, these teeth would have been capable of inflicting deep puncture wounds, allowing homotherium to escape or move in for the killing blow. On the opposite end of the saber-sized chart is Smilodon, which had the longest canines in the entire subfamily. These canines range from 5 to 11 inches, with Populator boasting the longest. It's highly unlikely that Smilodon could hide these saber teeth like homotherium, and most depictions reflect that. Smilodon's teeth were noticeably narrower, more slender, and lacked serrations. The leading theory for how Smilodon cats used their teeth is that they used their considerable upper body strength and forelimbs to pin prey in position before delivering quick stabbing bites to soft, vulnerable spots. Smilodon teeth were fairly delicate and were at risk of breaking if they bit into bone or if they were exposed to stress caused by struggling prey for long periods. Being stabbed by 11-inch daggers out in the prehistoric wild was pretty much a death sentence, even for some of the biggest animals. Such blows to the neck or underbelly would have led to severe bleeding and death. Smilodon and Homotherium cats could also open their jaws more than 90 degrees to give their extra-long canines room to work. Like modern cats, they fed by slicing meat off with their carnassial teeth, which are at the sides of the jaws. This allowed them to eat without their long canines getting in the way. Interestingly, despite having bigger teeth, Smilodon likely had a weaker bite force than modern big cats. Smilodon's skull had a fairly small set of zygomatic arches, which means it could not support large temporalis muscles. The temporalis muscles are responsible for biting and chewing, and are therefore what powers the jaws. After crunching a bunch of numbers based on the size and geometry of the various skulls and arches, a bunch of scientists concluded that, on average, Smilodon cats had a bite that was merely a third of a modern lion's. In other words, Smilodon had between 220 and 330 pounds per square inch of biting power, which is lower than some domestic dogs. This is the same story for Homotherium, which also sacrificed sheer biting power for quick kills. Again, skull structures suggest weak jaw muscles compared to modern big cats that rely on bite force to strangle big prey and crush bone. The lack of bite force also casts a doubt over how effective these cats were at harvesting bones for marrow. Surely, as animals that lived through the Ice Ages, Smilodon and Homotherium would have been able to get maximum nutrition from kills or scavenging jobs, right? Well, maybe not. Perhaps this jaw power issue was part of the two Machiridont's ultimate demise. Despite being cousins within the same subfamily, Smilodon and Homotherium were actually separated by over 18 million years of divergence from a common ancestor. These two, along with the rest of Machiridontini, are separated from the two living Felid subfamilies, Felini and Pantherini, by over 20 million years of genetic divergence. Felini is home to small to medium cats, including domestic cats, lynxes, cougars, cheetahs, and servals. Pantherini is the big cat subfamily and it is made up of jaguars, lions, tigers, and leopards. Smilodon and Homotherium often lived in similar places and at the same time as these cats, yet they and the rest of the Machiridonts are all gone these days. Their extinctions are largely a mystery to us today, but a few theories abound. In the case of Homotherium latidens, scientists blame the emergence of new large cat species, like the cave lion Panthera fossilis, and the intense competition that they brought. Smilodon's extinction is largely blamed on the disappearance of a lot of the mega herbivores that were a staple of its diet. Animals like giant bison, wild horses, camelids, and giant sloths died out during the late Pleistocene, 
and the way their demise coincided with that of the Smilodon cats is often used as evidence. American Homotherium species are believed to have gone extinct for similar reasons. The impact of mega herbivores being wiped out was amplified by the level of competition for small to medium prey. Other felids like lynxes, cougars, and jaguars, as well as other predator groups like wild dogs, were much better at hunting these smaller critters, and they could get enough nutrition from this small prey to sustain themselves. And then, of course, there are human beings. Both Smilodon and Homotherium would have crossed paths with people during the latter stages of their existence, and humans were a threat to the cats directly, a threat to their habitats, and a major competitor for food. In fact, Smilodon disappeared from the Americas around the same time Homo sapiens showed up. Another potential cause for these big cats' downfall might have been how exposed their cubs were. Other predators and humans would not have hesitated to kill Smilodon or Homotherium cubs on sight, and given the fairly slow reproduction rate among big cats, this could have dealt a fatal blow to their populations. Unfortunately, there is very little evidence to prove this particular theory, but the emergence of new predators is often a major threat to the vulnerable young of resident animals that aren't used to predation. In addition to the mystery of their extinction, there is a lot of murkiness surrounding their respective sociability. Many researchers often lean on the relative proximity of certain fossils, particularly at California's La Brea Tar Pits, to hint that these cats were highly social and lived in groups. Another potential sign of gregarious living was that these cats were pretty large intended to operate in open grasslands. Lions, which also live in grasslands, are highly dependent on group life and hunting to offset their bulk, lack of stamina, and limited cove. Of course, it's important to remember that lions are the general outlier when it comes to modern wild cats. Most felids are actually very solitary and territorial, and many other scholars use this fact as a basis for their assertions that Homotherium and Smilodon were, in fact, solo hunters as well.